Uh, welcome back to Once Upon a Game. I'm Kevin Kitchens, and in this episode, I'm going to do a uh, sort of a sequel to my unboxing of Stellar Horizons by Andrew Rader uh, from Compass Games. Um, this is going to be kind of a uh, reboxing or a showing how I reboxed it, um, as I mentioned in the unboxing, uh, which I'll link to in this video. Um, uh, 1,500 or so counters in this game, including the ships, and there's a lot of variety of counters as well. And I know some more games uh, have a lot more than that. Um, but uh, so this one has a lot and I wanted to make sure that they were uh, well organized. I don't like digging through baggies uh, to try to find a particular counter I need. This game is pretty long as it is if you play the full campaign. And uh, so I just want to make sure that uh, I had organized. So I just show you a little bit of how I did it. Um, I don't know if it'll help you. I don't know if it'll be interesting or not, but we'll see. But as you see, it all goes back in the box. It does not close completely. There was a lot. There's a lot of stuff in this. Like that. There we go. Uh, I'm only going to need, uh, for instance, one rule book. It comes with two, so I just kept one rule book where I could get to it. And that's right on top, along with one sequence of play. And uh, one of the reference cards for setup and for uh, harvesting. So, got that on top, right on top. Uh, a lot of this video is actually gonna be for my own sake too, so I can remember how to put this back uh, once I set it up to play, so. All right, so then we've got the uh, the board, the technology tree board, and it goes on top. And then the two big planets, Jupiter and Saturn, they're right here. So you start working your way down, the smaller planets, uh, Venus, Earth, Mercury, so on and so forth. Those cards. Neptune and Uranus. They come in last. And and these can stack however they want. Uh, however you want. These I thought fit better here. Uh, and then they give me two locations to put the uh, the moons and things. Those discs. So, bring those in. Uh, you'll see I have these bands on there. These are not rubber bands. These are... Uh, I forget what they're called. I will link to them. Uh, I always call them elastibands, but they're they're made of plastic, not rubber, and they stretch to um, a, you know one size, and then they stay there. They don't actually do any damage. They don't dig in like a rubber band where they're constantly just you know contracting. So I like to use those on cards. Um, don't use them so much on sleeved cards because then they will you know they will damage the sleeves. But regular cards are hold, strong enough to hold up to them. So. Uh, split those into two even stacks, and they go there, and they kind of balance everything out. And so we got those. I do have one. This is not a GMT tray. This is a DVG tray, and it's the deeper, deeper pocket. Now, this is for a lot of the counters that are going to be um, on the table during the game. So I wanted to go ahead and make sure that those were here. Uh, and organized. I have some other counters that will go on the be, be available during the game, but these are ones that are, you know, maybe a little less apt to get to, or can be a little further away from the board or the action. I don't know. I'll know more as I as I play it, but uh, I didn't want to have those there. So um, the one thing about the DVG GMT trays, their lids stay on pretty well. With the DVG ones, they they tend to want to pop off pretty easy without a lot of effort. So fortunately, this one's going to sit flat on the shelf because it's so big. And it's wedged in with enough stuff that I don't think, even if I were tilted, it would spill. But uh, I may put one of these elastomans around it just to hold it all together. So I got one of those. And then below that, fortunately this all stacks really neatly, are the seven faction boards. Uh, and the so we got the policy tree, we got the seven faction boards, and they all stack neatly. These did have a little bit of warping and they've since settled down due to humidity. Uh, they've, while well, I was cutting or punching counters and putting boxes together, it uh, did take a little bit of, uh, they started to kind of bow and I put them, flipped them over and they seem to have settled down now, especially sitting in the box. So those stack there. And then we've got finally, uh, you know, I'm going to dig some more of this out, but this one fits in here nicely too, is the uh, turn track board with the years and the turns, economic phases. So those are here. And... That fits in nicely here. It's about the same size as the rules and stuff, about eight and a half by eleven. So, and then down below that is the extra set of rules, the extra uh, 
reference cards and the extra sequences of play. So I'll just leave those in there for now. So what you see here, these are, um, these are boxes I designed. Uh, the pattern is available on, excuse me, the pattern is available on Etsy. Um, so you can, you can buy that once if you want. And uh, here's another tile, deep space astronomy tile. Uh, so you buy that once and uh, you can make as many as you want. You would just print them out. Uh, you print the pattern out on uh, some light cardstock and then you just fold it and glue it together. And that works really well. Uh, and you can make all different kinds of sizes. Uh, most of these are gonna be, uh, these are all 24 millimeters. The box is actually 24 millimeters thick. Uh, there's dividers that you can also uh, insert in there and that brings them. Um, that maybe gives you a little more, you know, organized storage inside a box if you need to. So uh, so we'll start here with, um, well, we've got these, I'm well, sorry, these last tokens. These are those world, uh, world cards, they call them. And again, with the Elastabands, or Credibands, or whatever they're called, uh, just holding this two stacks together, and then they fit right in there. I really hope I remember how this goes back in. All right, these counters are ones that were replaced. They were, it says replaced, uh, by the Errata counters. So I went in and pulled them. Uh, it's funny, actually, on the, these, uh, I think it was the Soviet vessels. They said they weren't punched very cleanly, and they were, um, but they, uh, when they, on the replacement ones, they left the flag off. But fortunately, they're color-coded, and so you can tell that they're the Soviet. Uh, okay, so these boxes, I made several of them for this purpose. So here is, this would sit on the table, this is your cash tokens. And like I said, I made dividers that hold them separately. And so I got the ones and twos here, the fives here, and then the tens and twenty fives here. Um, it would have been nicer if I'd been able to completely separate everything, but the trade-off I think is worthwhile just to just to have them slightly divided, but then I can use them as I need to. And the labels I made in Photoshop, and I just printed out on uh, I got some. They're four inches wide by, I think, two, four by two labels. Uh, you get them at the office supply store. Uh, they're Avery labels, and they uh, they work great. So I just have to use the template that you get from Avery. And then I'll lay out the label in Photoshop and then combine them in print. And the cool thing about them is, is when you peel the label off of the sheet, you keep the, sh the sheet stays intact. So I can actually print like eight labels out of the 10 and then keep the other two um, available to use, and then when I lay out, I just only only place labels over those two that need to be printed, print out the sheet again. It only prints in the space that you need it, so they work out pretty well. So I made one for cash, and these are the ones that will be on the table. Like I said, the ore markers, same. They're just basically the ore currency. Uh, 10s, 25s, 5s, 1s, and 2s, same thing. The only one I messed up on was the, I think it's the heat, or the fuel, and I divided them uh, incorrectly. So supplies, same thing. And these just sit on the table and you can put the lid on the bottom. So the, the template has the lid, has the dividers, and has the thing, the uh, box base itself. It's like I said, this is a 24 millimeter. The lid's universal. It's 15 millimeters. And you get a 24 millimeter template. You get a 16 millimeter box, which we'll see some of in a minute. And then there's also a 32, 35 millimeter box that I'll show you as well. We've got one of those in the in the mix. And a little something special too. So supplies, it was fuel that I messed up on. And the graphics that I put on the label here, I just scanned some of the counters on a scanner and then lifted them and put them in here and laid them out. And I tried to mock the the logo. And if anybody wants to do this, I'll, you know, I'll send you the label artwork if you want to lay them out and do them yourself. You can just print these on sheet labels and cut them out too if you wanted to. So then those, I, I messed up by putting the ones and twos in the middle, so I didn't space this right, but again, it's fine for me. It's not a... All right, so I have those, and then uh, the dice fit over here in the corner. So here's a 35 millimeter box. <clears throat> and again, remember, they're all, they're all the same four by three design. It's, it's actually 100 millimeters by 75 millimeters, the way I laid it out. But then, so this one is 
the bases plus the asteroids and pirates. And as I was reading the rules, I realized that in a in a solo game, so I get some better light on here. So it's dark and dark. Um, as you can see the uh, the pirate markers and the asteroid markers. So what I was reading about in the solo rules is that um, all seven factions are in play even in a solo game. So if you're playing with two players, the other five factions will be non-player factions. And so the bases will all come out. Um, so the non-player factions, when they'll randomly place a base in a location and you'll draw from all the non-players one of their bases and put it out there. So I figured it was easier. What I've got is player, the faction boxes are here. And I just figured it was easier to uh, keep all the bases in a separate box. How are you gentlemen? All your bases are belong to us. And uh, hand out to each player, which in most cases will be me, the bases that I need for my control, but the rest of them will be here. And you can actually use this to draw if you're good. Um, might be a little tight with as many bases as there end up being. There's six per faction, so um, you can also uh, just take them from here and put them into a draw cut, however you like. So that's the one 35 millimeter box I used, and that was to make that a little deeper. Same thing with asteroids and pirates, is they get drawn uh, as well after a certain era. And then these are the these are the 16 millimeter boxes. As you can see, there's very little lip here. So when you open them. Got to be a little more careful. Like I said, I'm only made the lid universal. Um, but anyway, these are for the counters that you'll draw. And I'm I'm honest enough that I'm like right now I'm looking away as I'm mixing these up. I'm honest enough that I can mix them up and I look and see what I'm taking because just when you draw it, you then see how much you got. They do have the question mark side on the back. Uh, but again, you can put these into a different container for drawing if you wanted to. But this allows them to just be kept separately so you don't have to separate them to play. So you get the same thing with engineering markers and the same thing with the physics markers. All right. Um, so this one is uh, the settlement markers. And these are when you place settlements, you just start building settlements and they just accumulate in numbers. So they're like, it's like you know, the one flips to a two and then you take a two and a one and then you, know, you just basically money, you're adding them up, it doesn't matter how you get to your number, it's, so you're making change, but <clears throat> again, just to keep them organized. So I've got the uh, fives and tens here, the 15s, and uh, um, the fives become tens actually. And then these are threes and fours, and these are ones and twos. And they're just, you know, in there together for organization, you can draw them out and put them. So just keep them all together and clearly marked. Okay. Um, this is, uh, in the bottom, this is the errata, the bottom half of the errata card. Um, I punched the counters, and this actually was on here and said there was a error in the rule book on how to uh, set up the worlds. So I just held on to this. Uh, I thought about scanning it as a, uh, imprinting as a piece of paper and just putting it inside the rule book, but this was fine just to put it in there. Plus it, it kind of leveled things up with the bottom. The seven different factions, so they get all their ships um, they get all their ships, uh, plus their, uh, uh, control markers or faction markers. So I just took the 24 millimeter box and then I color coordinated the, the lid roughly to each faction, um, kind of based on the counters that they're, that they're using and then printed the label with the, again, I scanned the flags and, uh, cropped them out and then put them on here. So this is, uh, South America and Africa, uh, the faction, and then just play a little funny with the superscript there. So anyway, um, so these are all their ships and launch vehicles and orbiters and rovers and telescopes, etc. and then their faction markers. Now it looks like there's a bunch of different countries in here, because you can see a Japan flag there. The front <coughs> of all of these is the faction marker, and then they have a variety on the back. And what you're going to do with these is, I guess, it allows you to, to use them as extras, but also um, each faction can be negotiated with even in a solo game. So what you'll do is you will put the faction markers on neutral during the game, 
And so they, you can, each player can take some of theirs that have the other six factions on it, put them on the neutral negotiations. You can actually uh, uh, take actions to increase your standing with them or decrease it if you want to go to war with them and attack them, things like that. So um, that's why you'll see the other, other factions on the back. So anyway, but each player, this is what you'd hand out to each player, and then they would be able to um, have all their stuff in one place, and then you'd hand them their bases out of the bases box. So there's seven of the factions, and there's seven boxes. Uh, yellow is China. Uh, let see, brown is Asia. Red is Russia. Uh, light blue is Europe. Gray is Japan. And North America is uh, blue. All right, so the last one I want to show you is, this is, I don't have the lid for this in the download, but I will get it out there, and you can contact me if you need it. But this is one of the different installation markers. And it's a little bit bigger. This is a uh, 24 millimeter deep. But what it is, it's actually two of these. See, the same width as two put together. And so you take the lid off, and then here's the, they're divided into, into uh, three sections each. So what it is, is I build the boxes instead of closing off one end, I loop it, I glue it, and, and, and kind of like, um, so like this is the one wall, and then the other wall comes in and folds over, and it all glues together, and becomes one big box. And then with two sections, then you can put these dividers in as you want, and uh, put them in. So these are the refineries, mining stations, research stations, spaceports, supply stations, and defense networks. They're all the same. So you just keep them organized. So this can we come onto the table. So again, some of these, you, I mean, if you're fine with baggies, you would just be able to bag them, and you probably have a lot more room. Um, but uh, this just helps me to get it out and I can play, like I can leave most of this in if I'm playing North America, just take the North America box and the bases and I can leave those neatly organized and put away and then not to, not have to worry about them. And except for this board here, everything else then would stay in the box uh, and the dice and then the other stuff would just be on the table when I needed it. So uh, see if real quick I can get this all back in the way I had it, see if I remember what I had done. So I think the, uh, the base is there. No, the bases were not there. Some markers are there. So we can get it all back in real quick. The yeah, I can do much. I'm excited to finally now get to play the game. <laughs> now that it's I've got I've gotten it uh, organized like I want. Um, did I get this right? Oh, and the cash, and the ore, and the biology. So they have those stacked together. And then those can go in there. The vertical, the, these boards can go there. That's right. That guy was there. The stack goes in here. And then we have the DVG tray that just drops into that slot. And yeah, those are going to go there. And those can go there. Oh, look at me, I'm getting it right. Believe me, I didn't practice this actually. And those two will sit something like that. So it does lift up a little bit, which is kind of annoying, but I'll live with it. The board, and then the three rule books that I need. Or reference cards and rule books that I need. And that is everything put back into the box of Stellar Horizons. So that's my organization of it. Uh, if you're interested, I'll have links to the pattern below. If you've already bought it, thank you. And you know, I'm sure you're using it for other things. And um, uh, thanks for watching. God bless you. Bye bye. Oh.